Good morning and Happy New Year. Welcome to Worship with Canterbury Salvation Army. Our opening song this morning is song number 522 and I think the words of the second verse are really relevant for all of us just now. Standing on the promises that cannot fail when the howling storms of doubt and fear assail by the living word of God I shall prevail standing on the promises of God. Let's sing. This has been a long year. A year of uncertainty, struggle, pain. We've watched a virus take countless lives. People we knew, people we loved. Jobs have been lost. Businesses have shut down. And churches have been forced to close their doors. We've witnessed division on an unprecedented level. Cities filled with violence, streets filled with protesters, and we felt the sting of racism, the deep heartache of hate. There have been where it's been difficult to see the hand of God. But even in the darkest of moments, He has been there, faithful, present, powerful. As a new year begins, we stand on a simple truth. Those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. 
They'll soar on wings as eagles. They'll run and not grow weary. They'll walk and not grow faint. We don't know what this new year will hold, but we know that it's held by a God whose mercies are new every morning. This is where we place our trust. This is the truth on which we stand. This is our hope for the new year.
Here's a chance to sing together again. I'm going to sing song number 893. It's another song that reminds us of the certainty of the promises of God. All the promises of God are sure. Let's sing. <laughs> Hello. While Christmas was over 12 days and the start of another lockdown ago, I thought you would like to know that our street collection raised £2,019. Looking ahead, the pastoral team has taken on responsibility for the weekly kit magazine. I'm confident that you would like to join me in expressing sincere thanks to Chris Ward for all the hard work and time he has put in since he started this project. The team hopes to publish the next edition over the weekend of the 16th and 17th of January and would very much welcome your input to this publication. Do you have anything that is a memento or a symbol of a promise, commitment or covenant you may have made and can share it with us, along with a few words? It does not have to be specifically related to God. It can be something that is, means something to you. The contributions for Harvest and Remembrance were so encouraging as we face lockdown again, it would be good to hear from you. Please send your contribution to bob.crick at me.com, ideally by the 13th of January, to give the novice editors and publishers a chance to meet the self-imposed deadline. The tune that will be played during the collection is Lord of the Years. Thank you.
Today's Bible reading comes from Exodus chapter 9, verses 1 to 8. The Israelites at Mount Sinai. The people of Israel left Rephidim, and on the first day of the third month after they had left Egypt, they came to the desert of Sinai. There they set up camp at the foot of Mount Sinai, and Moses went up the mountain to meet with God. The Lord called to him from the mountain and told him to say to the Israelites, Jacob's descendants, You saw what I the Lord did to the Egyptians and how I carried you as an eagle carries her young on her wings and brought you here to me. Now if you will obey me and keep my covenant, you will be my own people. The whole earth is mine, but you will be my chosen people. A people dedicated to me alone, and you will serve me as priests. So Moses went down and called the leaders of the people together and told them everything that the Lord had commanded him. Then all the people answered together, We will do everything that the Lord has said. And Moses reported this to the Lord. Good morning, everybody. Happy New Year. Um, let's hope this, the coming year is going, to, is going to be better than the one that's just, uh, just gone. There's lots of hope out there and... Uh, Let's hope that uh, we can get the injections um, and get back to some sort of normality. The band piece this morning is uh, a version of a uh, song 294. It's the words I always like to use at the beginning of a new year, in particular because of the first uh, first stanza of the uh, the first verse, where it says, "Breathe on me, breath of God, fill me with life anew." The music is gentle, it um, only uses two of the verses, which is a shame, because all of the verses have got um, lovely things about them. And, and I think we could tr just treat this, this piece as a gentle way into the new year. And if you reflect on some of the words in this song, then I think that might help us get to a new starting point. The, f the rest of the first one, or the, the first one goes like this. Breathe on me, breath of God, fill me with life and you, that I may love what thou dost do, love, and do what thou wouldst do. Breathe on me, breath of God, until my heart is pure, until with thee I will one will to do and to endure. Breathe on me, breath of God, till I am wholly thine, until this earthy part of me glows with thy fire divine. The last verse um, is the reason why this piece is finished on a really bright note. And again, the words are these, breathe on me, breath of God, so shall I never die, but live with thee the perfect life of thine eternity. Here's the piece, breathe on me, breath of God. Uh, Trevor Davis wrote it in 1993, and it is one of those pieces that is endured and one of those pieces that I really like to use. Um, it's simple, straightforward, but lovely. I hope you enjoy this.
Good morning. Last Sunday we had the privilege of joining together in worship led by our territorial leadership team. Commissioners Cottrell, supported by Colonels Main, introduced this year's theme for Vision and Commitment Sunday, Going Forward Together, Living in God's Covenant. And the territorial commander got us to start thinking about the concept of covenant and being in covenant with God. It was suggested that Corps may want to spend a week or two exploring the theme further and the idea of covenant generally. And so using some resources made by THQ, I thought that we could make a start this morning. There are many examples of covenant in the Old Testament. God forms a covenant with Noah in Genesis 9, with Abraham in Genesis 12, 15 and 17, with Joshua in Joshua 24, and with King David in 2 Samuel 7. Original covenants are then rehashed, as it were, for example in 2 Kings 11 and 23, as well as Jeremiah 31. Yet the definitive covenant is believed to be that with God's chosen people, Israel, through his servant Moses, and it was this account that Amy read for us a short time ago. If we were to keep on reading, we would then witness the giving of the Ten Commandments in Exodus 20, and the establishing of the Ark of the Covenant with its tabernacle in Exodus 25 and 26. As is often the case with Old Testament text, the entire detail of the covenant is quite wordy, and so we are grateful for Jeremiah's pithy summary in chapter 7 and 23, I will be your God and you shall be my people. And so this morning, let us together familiarise ourselves with the definitive covenant made with Israel through Moses, as found in Exodus 19. There are three key ideas, three themes, that emerge, and I invite you to explore them with me just now. Let's start by looking at God's initiative as he establishes covenant with his people. In contrast to the earlier Abrahamic covenant, the people of Israel had been miraculously and dramatically delivered from captivity in Egypt. And God asks Moses to remind the people of their deliverance as the foundation of their covenant call. Verse 4 tells us, You saw what I, the Lord, did to the Egyptians, and how I carried you as an eagle carries her young on her wings, and brought you here to me. The image of being carried to God on eagles' wings is both compelling and reassuring. It also underlines the initiative that God takes in choosing us first. He wants that close relationship with us and is prepared to ensure it with the provision of his guidance, care and protection. As Isaiah rightly reminds us, those who trust in the Lord for help will find their strength renewed. They will rise on wings like eagles. They will run and not get weary. They will walk and not grow weak. Those words were a beacon of hope during 2020. We are reminded of them daily here as they are printed on a set of coasters, which we own, and which Agatha enjoys playing with. It's apt, is it not, at the start of this new year, and looking back on how the first ten days of it have gone on a local, national and international level, to be reminded of God's provision to us all. God wants to ensure our close relationship because he chooses us to be in an everlasting covenant with him. There is a significant difference between a contract and a covenant. We live in an age of contracts. There seems to be a contract for everything, from our phones to accommodation to employment, so many aspects of our lives governed by contracts. Contracts can be amended, negotiated and possibly improved upon. However, they can also be broken and dissolved. Historically, humankind has proved unfaithful in its covenant with God you could say the contract element was temporarily broken, but the covenant relationship lives on. God's covenant commitment is everlasting. Paul reminds us in 2 Timothy 2.13, if we are not faithful, he remains faithful, because he cannot be false to himself. God's covenant commitment is also one of love. In Hebrew, there is a word for love that is far richer and deeper in meaning than it is in English, Hesed. Based in a covenantal relationship, Hesed is a steadfast, rock-solid faithfulness that endures to eternity. It is a love that is so enduring it persists beyond any sin or betrayal to mend brokenness and graciously extend forgiveness. It is the closest thing in the Old Testament to the New Testament understanding of grace. 
Chesed is to love as God loves. What were we reminded of during the morning's brass ministry? Breathe on me, breath of God, fill me with life anew, that I may love what thou dost love, and do what thou wouldst do. Again it is Isaiah who clearly captures the reality of Hesed. In chapter 54 and verse 10 of Isaiah we read, The mountains and hills may crumble, but my love for you will never end. Hesed. I will keep forever my promise of peace, so says the Lord who loves you. The biblical scholar John Oswald describes Hesed in this way. The word Hesed is the descriptor par excellence of God in the Old Testament. The word speaks of a completely undeserved kindness and generosity done by a person who is in a position of power. This was the Israelites' experience of God. He revealed himself to them when they were not looking for him, and he kept his covenant with them long after their persistent breaking of it had destroyed any reason for his continued keeping of it. Unlike humans, this deity was not fickle, undependable, self-serving and grasping. Instead, he was faithful, true, upright and generous always. So what was God's initiative? He chose us to enter into an everlasting covenant of loyal and faithful love. Another theme that can be drawn from the covenant made with Israel is that of obedience to what God commands. While God's covenant is everlasting and faithful, it is designed to be a relationship in which we as God's people declare our love and humble obedience to our King, and in him find our life and fullness. God says to Moses in verse 5 of chapter 19, Now if you will obey me and keep my covenant, you will be my own people. The whole earth is mine, but you will be my chosen people. What a status, say. Eh? to be God's chosen people, or as the NIV puts it, my treasured possession. I'm sure we are all aware of the joy and pride and overwhelming happiness that comes from being identified as special and significant. You may be familiar with the work of Justin Fletcher, aka Mr Tumble, and the CBB's programme Something Special. It's one of Agatha's favourites, she loves to watch it, and I listen to it from time to time, as my irrational fear of clowns prevents me from actually looking at the screen for good chunks of the programme. Every episode, children are reminded just how special they are in their own unique way, and Agatha always smiles when the Shining Star badges are awarded. It's an odd parallel, I know, but in this covenant, God is identifying his people as being his treasured possession. We are chosen. We are something special, and that should fill us with great joy and excitement. And just as Abraham discovered with his own covenant, our obedience and commitment are what earns us the title, God's chosen people. God's covenant with Israel through Moses is accompanied by the Ten Commandments in chapter 20, and they are to define the character and the conduct of God's people, enabling them to be unique from all other peoples and nations of the world. Historical study shows just how radically different these exceptions were from any known religion or polytheism in the surrounding nations, in worshipping one living God with no other idols or gods. The law given to Moses is reflected in so much of our legal framework and in life generally. The Salvation Army aligns itself with God's commandments through its eleven doctrines, the second of which states, We believe that there is only one God, who is infinitely perfect, the creator, preserver, and governor of all things, who is the only proper object of religious worship. Therefore, as we go forward together living in God's covenant and discovering the fullness of life in him, may we be humble, true, and fully obedient to God's commands. We don't gain that treasured possession status without obedient compliance. And then we come to the final theme for the morning, and we've hinted on this a little earlier. This covenant is a holy one, and one of love. Ultimately, the people of God in covenant with him were being called to grow into the very character of the God who chose and called them to be set apart for him and to be holy. God says to Moses in chapter 19, The whole earth is mine, but you will be my chosen people a people dedicated to me alone, 
and you will serve me as priests. When the Hebrew Bible was translated into Greek, the Hebrew word for covenant was translated as testament, or as the dictionary defines it, the evidence of a specified fact. The covenant people of God are called to bear witness to their king in word and deed. God reminds the people through Moses that their covenant bond is not just something spoken in words, but something backed up in who we are and how we act. The Salvation Army prides itself on displaying faith in action. Our spoken ministry is supported by our practical ministry, acts of unconditional love aligned with the gospel of Jesus Christ. The NIV writes verse 6 of chapter 19 as, You will be for me a kingdom of priests and a holy nation. A kingdom of priests mediates or at least signifies God to the world, and so bears witness to who God is and what God expects. Equally, a holy nation is a people set apart who as such give clear testimony to the nature and character of God. In our focus on holiness, it's easy to get stuck on what we don't do, the negative aspect of holiness, rather than what we actually do, the positive aspect of holiness. If God's covenant love, Hesed, speaks of constant unfailing love and forgiveness, then the character of our holiness in the world is to be known fully for our actively generous, sacrificial, merciful and unfailing love as the people of this holy king. This is what we do and who we are called to be. And so to conclude this morning, though Exodus 19, 1-8 is quite a short text in comparison to other covenantal passages, we can take quite a bit from it. While the Israelites' journey as a covenanted people reveals disobedience and seasons of questioning their destiny, God keeps his covenant. He is faithful, just and merciful no matter how his people behave. God is unchanging and our responsibility to obey him does not change despite our failures. When Abraham faithfully and courageously set out on his journey with God, and believed the promises of God for his life, his family, his descendants and his future, it was with a very dim and rather smoky view of what this truly meant. In contrast, God's covenant with Israel through Moses, we see a much fuller flowering of God's character in and intent, to be ultimately superseded and fulfilled hundreds of years later in the hopes of the prophets and the reality of Jesus. Emmanuel, God with us, whose arrival to earth we celebrated just a few weeks ago. This week, as we reflect on what God has revealed to us through worship this morning, perhaps we could consider, what are some of the experiences of God's faithfulness that should give us confidence to step out with him under his eagle's wings of love and protection? When the Israelites were being disobedient, God kept his covenant. How can we show those in difficult seasons of life that God is faithful, just and merciful, no matter how they behave? How can we share a bit of God's nature with them? How can we share our testimony with others to show God's hesed in action? What obstacles might there be to this covenant reality being fully alive and active in us? And what can we do to overcome them? Our songbook is filled with so many verses that we could use as a way of responding to God's message this morning. I've chosen Song 601, a personal prayer of commitment, devotion and with a willingness to transform. The chorus reads, Hold me close, let your love, let your hesed surround me. Bring me near, draw me to your side. And as I wait, I'll rise up like the eagle and I will soar with you. Your spirit leads me on in the power of your love. As we sing together, feel free to reflect and respond as you feel led. May God bless you.
Heavenly Father, we come before you just now, at the start of a new year, as a prayerful and hopeful church family. As we read through your word and see the wonderful plan of salvation which you purposed to carry out through your chosen people Israel, we thank you that despite their disobeying the conditions of your covenant, you never gave up on your people. We take comfort in the knowledge that despite our failings, you will never give up on us, and that our covenant with you is everlasting. You are the source of our comfort and strength. May we continue to seek solace as we draw nearer to you. Surround us with the faithful, steadfast, eternal love that binds our covenant of holiness with you. We thank you that today you are carrying out your plans and purposes through your church and its people, and that, by faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, we are also your treasured possessions. We praise you, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. Our closing song this morning is song number 861. I'll read you the words of the first verse. That'll be very familiar to many of you, I'm sure. In Christ alone, my hope is found. He is my light, my strength, my song. This cornerstone, this solid ground, firm through the fiercest drought and storm. What heights of love, what depths of peace. When fears are stilled, when striving cease. My comforter, my all in all, here in the love of Christ I stand. Let's sing together.
To conclude this morning, let's read together our benediction. And I am convinced that nothing can ever separate us from God's love. Neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither our fears for today nor our worries about tomorrow. Not even the powers of hell can separate us from God's love. No power in the sky above or in the earth below. Indeed, nothing in all creation will ever be able to separate us from the love of God that is revealed in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Thank you for joining with us this morning. We hope you've enjoyed your time with us. We're certainly glad that you've been able to join with us. Hope that everybody has a good week, a safe week, and we'll see you next Sunday morning. God bless.